Welcome to Lab 9. We'll be looking at simple harmonic motion today. First, let's start with a few facts that we will need to use. Fact 1. Whenever we have the sine of an angle, if the angle stays small, under 10 degrees is a good place to be, the sine is almost the same as the angle by itself in radians. Fact number 2. When we have an equation of the form acceleration equals a negative constant times position, we can, using some math that you don't need to know, work out the period of that system. 2 pi times the square root of 1 over that constant. Now we'll use these two facts to help us in understanding harmonic motion. We have a pendulum. This, when displaced, will swing back and forth. Let's freeze this in time and work out the equation of motion. At any angle theta, we can compute the torque on the pendulum due to gravity. It's just the force, mg, times the length of the pendulum times the sine of the angle. We need a negative sign, since this torque is always opposite the direction of increasing theta. We can also write Newton's law. Torque equals angular acceleration times inertia. Inertia is just mass times length squared. We can combine these two equations to get something that is close, but not quite the same as our fact number 2. To fix it, notice that we can use fact 1 to replace sine theta with theta as long as our angle is not too large. Now this looks like fact number 2 with g over l as our constant. So the period is 2 pi square root l over g. The spring is nearly identical. One caveat that is best explained in the lab manual is why we can ignore the initial stretch from gravity. In short, it only displaces the zero point of the x variable, that is, the resting point of the mass, but has no effect on the period. Let's go. We'll be timing the period in several different configurations. To time a period with a stopwatch or phone, just let the pendulum go. After a swing or two, start. Remember, don't count one until the full swing is complete. Count 20 periods, I'm just going to four here, then stop. You'll be dividing your results by 20 to find a single period. This is much better than trying to perfectly time a single period. You'll need to measure the length of the pendulum from the rotation point to the center of mass. Use a protractor when angle is important. You'll be able to use your measurements to find g, the gravitational constant on Earth. The spring experiment will have you using the normal mg equals kx to find the spring constant k. Measure from any point, you are only interested in changes in x. You'll also pull the spring down a small amount, don't overstretch, and measure the period just like the pendulum. You can use that to find the spring constant k also. You'll compare these. 